Back in May, on May 3rd, we celebrated the Feast of the Finding of the Holy Cross, which is when St. Helena, the mother of um, Constantine, the great Christian emperor, she went out and searched for the cross and found it in a miraculous way. She applied, she found three crosses, and then, of course, they didn't know which cross belonged to who, which one our Lord was crucified on and which the two thieves. So they, they applied them to sick people. And finally, the, the one cross that belonged to our Lord, well, that one cured the sick person, and that's how they found out belonged to our Lord. It was kept as a prized possession, this relic of the Holy Cross was, in Jerusalem. That is until, at some point, uh, Khosra was his name. He came and attacked Syria and overran the, the capital city of Syria, which was Jerusalem. And then they took 8,000 men with them, captured many prisoners, including the, the patriarch, whose name was Zachary. They took him away, too. And then, on top of it, the enemies took out, took the giant relic of the true cross. And they took it back to Persia. And Khosros, he had the, the holy cross relic all decked out in jewels and fancy diamonds and everything else and then placed right above his own personal throne, which was made of pure gold, they said. And where I read this, they said it was interesting that this heathen emperor, Khosros, actually would have treated that holy relic in a much more distinguished and pious manner than even Martin Luther himself, who was known to have said, well, if I had a piece of the true cross, I would put it where the sun would never shine. But there was this heathen, heathen emperor who at least had the respect for it to beautify it, to keep it in a respectful place. Well, in any case, of course, the Christians in Jerusalem wanted to get their relic back. It belonged to them, not to the heathens. And on top of it, they wanted to gain back Jerusalem and all the towns that they had lost. So the emperor of Jerusalem went and started to, because they didn't have as many soldiers as did Khosros and the heathens, the Christian emperor started to talk about peace treaties and all of the rest. And, well, Khosros, he had many victories under his belt. He didn't want it to hear about any sort of a treaty. He wanted to defeat I believe is what it was, one more person. But eventually he gave in and he said, well, I will accept your terms, provided that you give up your Christian faith. And the emperor at that point, even though he knew, the good emperor, the Christian emperor, even though he knew he was far outnumbered, he stepped back and realized, whoa, this is an attack on our faith, the faith of many a person. He said, I cannot have any of this. He went back into his own town, talked to his soldiers, and said to them what they told them what they should do. I want all of you, he said, to pray and to fast and to do good deeds and give alms, all that you can to please God so that he blesses us and gives us the strength we need to wage war against this much more mighty enemy of ours. And they all did that, the emperor himself included. He was the example to all of the others. And then when they got all the soldiers together to begin this fight, he told the soldiers one last time, there should be no blaspheming and no, no other sins because we want to gain the blessing of God and become victorious. And they did put to rout the, the enemies were able to take back the Holy Cross relic to their own country. Now, the king, the Christian king, he decided, well, he would take that Holy Cross relic back up to a chapel on Mount Calvary. So he formed a procession with all of the clergy, and the king would carry it in. He had himself put in all of his royal 
his royal uh, cloaks and and capes and all of that and the beautiful golden crown and everything and he carried the cross on his shoulders all the way to Calvary but as soon as he got to the bottom of Mount Calvary he couldn't move anymore he was stuck now everyone was scared at that point everyone in the procession they're wondering what's going on well the patriarch Zachary he received a message from God he was the only one that knew what was going on. So he whispered into the king's ear, he said, Our Lord did not enter Mount Calvary decked out as you are. He entered humble. He had not a crown of gold, but a crown of thorns. And he was mocked in all of his clothing and everything else. The king got the message. He removed his crown and he went up more humbly and bare, with bare feet. And as soon as he did that and took off his crown, he received the strength to walk. And so he completed the procession into the church. And there they enthroned that beautiful relic, which is the price of our salvation, the instrument of our salvation. Now, the lesson for today's feast is this. As you see the Holy Cross relic there, that's a piece of the true wood of the cross that our Lord, our Savior's blood was upon. Think of that. Meditate on it. We have that precious relic and, and a relic of our salvation right here in Milwaukee. Now, how is it that we can, cry, we can consider so important and venerate so highly the splinter from the cross. And yet, when the real daily crosses come to us, which truly, spiritually speaking, is a splinter from our Lord's cross that enters into our heart, how, be, how come we are not able to venerate those crosses, to love them, to accept them graciously, and to carry them to Mount Calvary? Meditate on that a little bit today. And as you imagine our Lord with this relic of the Holy Cross, perhaps touched his very blood, think to yourself, well, my Lord, I'm not a very good cross bearer, but if you help me, like Simon of Cyrene helped you, I'm sure that I can carry my cross quite well to the end of my life, where the cross becomes a bridge, remember, becomes a bridge that fits and it is your personal bridge that goes from time into eternity. And without that cross to lay over the river that separates time and eternity, you cannot enter. Bear your cross and bear your cross well, so that one day you may see God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.